Hey, and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. I'm going to do a little short demo on how to collimate a daub using a laser. I get a lot of questions on astronomyforum.net about how to do this. Uh, a lot of people are still using a collimation cap or a Cheshire little device to uh, optically try to collimate their daubs. And this is kind of difficult to do unless you have two people. Uh, I'm going to show you a way to do it that's very quick, very accurate, and you can do it in just a minute or two once you learn how to do it. So here we are looking at a little uh, Orion XT10i. Now this scope requires that you collimate it virtually every time you take it out in the field. General rule is that the bigger the mirror, the more often it has to be collimated. So this scope has to be collimated virtually every time I take it out, especially if I transport it in a car, kind of knock it around a little bit while we're going out onto the field or something. You got to recollimate it. So let's take a look first at the secondary, and I want to show you something on the secondary mirror. So here we are looking at the secondary, and as you can see, I've got what's called Bob's Knobs installed on the secondary mirror of this Orion uh, X-T10. These make collimation a whole lot easier than trying to manipulate a little Allen wrench in the dark or out in the field, and you drop it, lose it in the grass, and or worse, drop it down the tube and damage your primary mirror. So installing these little uh, Bob's knobs really make collimation a whole lot easier. So I recommend that you jump right out on the internet and Google up Bob's knobs, K-N-O-B, knobs, and you can order these for just about every brand of Dobsonian reflector that's out there on the market. You can order a specific set for your particular daub. So get you some of these and we'll proceed with this collimation now. So the first thing I want to show you and I've got my little uh, Kodak uh, ZI-8 in close-up mode is I want to show you this Orion Pro laser collimator. Now notice it's got a what looks like a screen on the side of it that's kind of tilted at a at an angle. And what this permits you to do is once you collimate the secondary, which we'll do in a second, you can see this screen from the back of the telescope tube while you're trying to collimate the primary. So it turns uh, collimation into a one-person event. You don't need any help uh, to see how close or how far out of collimation you are. All you have to do is just look at the screen and get the return beam to hit the center of the screen and by adjusting the primary mirror collimation bolts so that the return beam comes back and hits this target right in the center. So if you buy a laser collimator, I would strongly encourage you to buy one that has a return beam screen on it. Makes collimation a whole lot easier. You don't have to get up and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth every time you make a little adjustment. You can just stay right down at the back of the scope, right back there, and adjust those bolts so that you'll have perfect collimation. Okay, I've placed the laser collimator into the focuser. Notice that I've got my focuser out about halfway. So what I do is I will uncork it a little bit about halfway out. And that's the position that I personally use when I want to collimate this daub. And that's the typical position 
that the focuser will be in generally to be in focus about halfway out so that's how I leave it and let's just walk around the other side and I can show you there is the screen you can see I'm almost in perfect collimation right now because I always keep the scope kind of perfect but we'll go through it but you can see I'm down at the back of the scope right now and I can see that red dot and where it's returning and if I come back here just for a minute and turn one of these collimation bolts that I showed you earlier you can see that the dot moves around okay it moves around on the surface of the target so what I have to do is get it to come right back into the middle of the target and then I simply know that I'm in collimation so let's do this step by step this is the kind of laser collimator you should buy because it makes it real fast and easy to do collimation out in the field okay we're looking down the tube of this scope right now and I can tell that I'm slightly off just very slightly the beam is not quite on the center spot just kind of next to it right now right next to it now sometimes I'd probably just leave this scope alone wouldn't touch it it's close enough for you know you're not going to be able to notice the tiny amount that the secondary is off but for these purposes I'm going to turn a few of these collimation bolts and you can see that beam moving around and I'll get it back in the middle tighten everything up like so so now the secondary is collimated first step is to always do the secondary my secondary beam on that laser collimator is dead center on the donut that's in the applied to the middle of the primary mirror so for all intents and purposes the secondary is perfect right now so let's walk around to the other side see how the primary is doing and now my next mission is to try to get that dot right there to be perfectly on the screen right about there so that's how long it took me to collimate this dob I just did it what was that less than two or three minutes and you can do the very same thing you just need to step out there and buy yourself a collimator laser style with a return beam screen make sure the laser itself is collimated and we can do that in another episode show you how to do that but there's many instructions on the internet on how to collimate a laser collimator that's actually the first thing you need to do is check collimation on that laser collimator so as I usually say I wish y'all clear skies and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.